Hey everybody, welcome back to Matthew Kelly Pottery. I hope you are doing well. Today I'm going to show you how to make this vase right here and this platter bowl right here. And I'm going to do it from two angles at the same time, side by side, split screen, so you get to see all the angles at one time in the same video. And uh, I got a pretty cool setup here and I think it's going to be neat. So let's go. All right, everybody, I am going to make two basic forms that I make quite a lot of and variations of, but I've got two one and a half pound clay balls and I've got both of my cameras set up. So I'm going to, uh, as I said, I'm going to actually film uh, making these pieces from two angles and you're going to see both of them simultaneously. Uh, I have definitely seen this before. I believe Hin Shu Lin uh, did a video like this and I had somebody recently tell me at my uh, show that I was at that, hey, you know what? It'd be really cool if you set up two cameras and uh, and film for two angles at the same time. And I'm like, well, I don't have two cameras. And I'm like, but I have been, you know, considering buying an iPad to do all my editing on. And I said that, you know, I, I, I've been putting it off because I just said, you know what? Once my YouTube channel pays for the iPad, that's what I said originally, then I will get an iPad. And I still put it off, even after my YouTube had more than supplied the finances to buy the iPad. I just was doing kind of delayed gratification. and uh, But it felt good to actually go and just uh, get an iPad to do my editing on and also have a second camera so that I could do this. Uh, so I've got one camera above and one camera to the side. And like I said, I have two uh, pound and a half clay balls and I'm going to make one uh, bowl, probably kind of like a platter bowl. And then I'm going to make one vase and you'll get to see uh, both angles simultaneously side by side as I throw these. I thought that'd be a really way, a really cool way to show you guys uh, the technique of how I do these. And I will try to walk through and explain some of what I'm doing as I'm doing it as well. But I guess we'll do uh, we'll do the vase first, and then we'll do the uh, the platter bowl second. And I will try to keep my head out of the way from the. Uh, the camera above. I can't really uh, check it uh, to see if my head's in the way or not. So, uh... but anyway, um, appreciate you guys being here and, and uh, appreciate all of the support on my YouTube channel. And uh, I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you learn something. Uh, this is not necessarily for basics or beginners, but it definitely can help anybody at any level in ceramics, I believe. So, uh, anyway, in making vases, one of my, uh, one of my things I do is, is uh, just like any piece, you try to get the clay ball centered uh, really well, but I really try very hard when I'm throwing vases to try to keep that clay ball centered throughout the entire process because, uh, as you all probably know, if you throw it off center or knock it off center at any point, it's just going to exacerbate the problems no matter what you're making. But if you're trying to make a delicate shape of a vase, then that makes that that much harder if you uh, if you're working with an uncentered ball of clay. So one of the first things I do in throwing a vase is try to get the clay going inward to begin with. So I uh, after I centered it, open the clay ball, I kind of cup under to give me a spot to pull from. And my first pull is actually going to be with my left hand, where I kind of do like a claw pull, but I'm kind of going to roll it up like this. I'm mainly going to pinch between my thumb. And my fingers on the inside and I'm going to keep the sponge on the outside to help keep it wet because I definitely have to add water while I'm doing that and I just kind of pinch up kind of pinch up and in to kind of create that beehive shape so that at the beginning I can uh, go ahead and have the, the the cylinder already in that cone shape because it's a whole lot easier for that shape to go out and if you ever want to make a slender uh, cylinder or or slender vase or even one that uh, have with a small neck you kind of need to keep that in at the beginning to help you uh, uh, towards the end so now uh, with a pound and a half I'm just gonna pull with my middle finger on my right hand on the outside so I'm gonna I'm gonna push that in here I keep the sponge in my hand to to wet the clay 
and then I'm pushing against pretty much the middle finger and my ring finger on the uh, on my left hand on the inside pinching together and pulling up and this bat is a little bit loose so I'm gonna be a little judicious with how much I pull and how aggressively I pull but that's okay if you've been here for any length of time you know one way to fix that would be to put a little bit of slip underneath the bat before you start throwing that helps that bat stick down so that you don't have to worry about it coming up while you're pulling I normally don't have a lot of water inside but I got a little excess so I'm gonna go ahead and get that out now I'm gonna do another pull I just use my sponge to add the water to the rim and then down the outside I like using the sponge to add water like that so that I don't just throw a bunch of water on there with my hand I think one of the keys to that will help you throw better pots is to not use too much water especially if you're trying to do something that's delicate uh, if you add too much water you're softening the clay throughout the process and then it's harder for the clay to hold itself up at the end of the process all right that's probably pulled about enough there's probably a little bit of clay left in the bottom there uh, yeah, I might do one more pull just in the bottom. This top half is definitely pulled enough uh, for doing shaping, but the bottom still has some in there, so I'm gonna go back to the bottom and pull, but I'm gonna kind of just pull up kind of halfway, and I will continue that pull through the rest of the, 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 the cylinder, but I'm not really pushing. So I'm just kind of, just to finish the, just to finish the pull, so that I don't just pull halfway and then pull my hands away so that I get it uneven. Uh, I only put pressure on the bottom half, uh, but I did finish my hands going through the full motion just without pressure on the top half. Got a little something rough in it right there, so I wanted to get that out. All right, um, there was something I was thinking about just a second ago, and now I've forgotten what I was gonna do. Oh, I was gonna measure the height of it. Uh, now because I have a lot of people say you didn't tell us how tall that was so right now I have a cylinder that's nine inches tall and the top is about three and a half uh, three and three quarters inches wide in here it's probably more like four four and a quarter um, uh, just to give you guys a size reference what I'm gonna do before I start shaping is go ahead and, and take away that extra clay with that 90 degree angle on this rib I just kind of take away that extra clay down there at the base because what I'm going to start doing by when I go to shape, I'm actually going to push in at the very base with this bat all the way with my rib all the way against the bat to make the bottom a little bit smaller than it is now. So my first pull with the rib is going to push in and then start shaping. And then let's see and then what I'm gonna do is now my next pull in order to make the foot that I like I'm gonna come up off the bat a little bit with my rib but still push in and that's gonna leave a little bit of clay there that I can roll and make my foot out of so this will be all the way to the bat I'm gonna lift up and then push in and you can see that little bit of clay there that I left behind I'm gonna go ahead and finish that kind of shaping pull as well so that it doesn't get uneven just by doing the base. And now I'm gonna come back and, and soften that. All right, sorry for that inter interruption there, but uh, I have my phone and do not disturb, but uh, my son called multiple times in a row, so my phone is set to the, the fact that it will ring if you call multiple times in a row in case it's an emergency. But uh, anyway, so I don't know exactly where it cut off, uh, but uh, what I was doing there is softening up the uh, the foot there by adding a little bit of water and then using my, my forefinger and my thumb and then my rib to kind of undercut it. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do now that I have the bottom, the foot done, and kind of the, the belly shape that I want, I'm actually gonna take and clean out any excess water that's inside. And then I'm gonna wet my sponge and get a little bit of water and just put it right up here on the top where I wanna kind of collar that in. I don't want to add water all the way down the piece because uh, 
that will soften it up too much but if I add water just where I want it and then start to squeeze in so I have my left hand kind of all as far as it'll reach around between my thumb and my middle finger and then my right hand just kind of helps guide that in like that and anytime I'm pulling in a small neck on a vase I've explained this before but I like to to kind of choke it in a little bit like that and then do a light pull just to kind of keep that clay even because you're taking you know I just took a opening that was three plus inches wide and I've got it down to like two plus inches so I've, I've choked that in so that clay has gotten thicker in order to not make that off uh, off balance it's good to do a pull and also kind of help keep helps just kind of keep it even all right now I'm gonna uh, choke that in again very similar way here and the advantage of, of like I said that centering that I've done early on and trying to keep it centered is gonna is really helping with this step because as you can see I've done two of those really dramatic chokes and I haven't really got a uh, an off center or a ripple much up here I've got a little bit of one but that's uh, I can definitely get that out right now by pulling not doing very strong of a pull but I am just pulling just a little bit just to kind of even that clay out I'm gonna do at least one more here just light now I'm just going to use my fingertips on each hand but you also saw that I worked on that shoulder there in between because that's kind of important I like to kind of keep the shoulder in check as I'm making a neck of a piece because I don't want this to get a, a funky angle and then not be able to correct that later or for that to make a weak spot where the uh, where the where it will collapse because I definitely know that uh, from experience if you get a weak spot and you're trying to make this a skinny neck that it has a, a, a good probability of collapsing right there so I've got enough clay here I'm just gonna keep and this is going well so I'm just gonna keep making this a little bit smaller and a bit of a more aggressive pull there because I've gotten it pretty far in and I had enough clay there and I was pretty much doing that to finish off the uh, the height of the, the, the top there and then come and shape that come back to the top clean off any excess water and off the outside all the way down and we're done with that vase and I will give you a measurement now on what this is finished at least finished throwing so we have 10 a little over 10 10 and an eighth uh, and the belly is about five and a quarter wide at the widest point um, so it's pretty neat to actually get a cylinder that was only nine inches tall and then to actually get a vase that's taller than the cylinder I pulled uh, that actually kind of surprised me, but uh, I like the way it looks. I'm going to do one more thing to this. Just to add a little bit more uh, design to it, I'm going to take and do some indentions uh, with the back of my rib right here on this neck. Uh, just give it a nice place for glaze to break. Alright, well there we go, there's that vase, we'll take that off and then start the, uh, the platter bowl. Alright, I have a pound and a half of clay again, as I said, for the platter bowl, and uh, we will get started on that. Of course the beginning process is just the same as it was for the vase, getting that clay ball centered. Now when I'm making platter bowls or just about any kind of bowl, I like to make sure that the bottom, when I open this clay ball, 
that the bottom actually has a slope to it. Um, I think it just looks good in the finished product to have the, ba uh, the inside bottom of the bowl to have a nice curve to it. So I kind of go as deep as I'm going to go and then as I'm kind of pulling out I, I kind of lift up with my thumb so that I can actually make a, uh, a curve on the inside of the bowl like that. Kind of go ahead and start that shape that I want when it's finished. And now I'm going to go ahead and kind of cup under again, but not as much because I know this bowl is going to be a wider, shallow bowl, and I don't want to pull that up and then have to pull it way out. I would rather go ahead and start pulling it kind of out at an angle, and that will help me in the finished product to not have to lay it out as much. I think if you can learn if you have an idea of what size bowl you would like to make and you can kind of learn to pull out at an angle like that, it's really going to help you a lot rather than pulling straight up and then trying to lay that, that cylinder out to make a bowl. So I'm doing quite a bit of pulling from the inside and the outside, but I'm using, like I said, my middle finger and, in, and ring finger on my right hand and my left hand. Uh, I should have showed you my fingers after I finished that pull, but I'll do one more and I can kind of show you. You can kind of check which fingers you're using most. I mean, you kind of know, but when you're done pulling, I've often done that to show people that after I'm done pulling or after I'm centering, you can pull your hands away. You can see right there that I've used those two fingers and that those two fingers right there, about the same part of each of those fingers and I just pulled kind of up and out with both of those. And so now what I do with this shape, if it was a bigger one, um, well here, what I, what I always do with this shape is go ahead and put the swirl on the bottom at this point. And just kind of put my finger down, push in and pull out a little faster than the wheel's going so I kind of get that irregular swirl on the bottom. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make the foot out of the clay. So normally on a vase I would cut away that extra clay that you see down there But on my platter bowls, I'm actually going to use that to make the foot So I'm going to leave that clay there and then I'm going to use this rib to kind of push up underneath it And then I'm actually going to use the 90 degree angle to come in and kind of Make a groove just above that foot and then use my finger to kind of push it back down what I'm doing is I'm making like a little hourglass, a, kind of a really sharp angle hourglass in, uh, as a foot there. And that's one reason I do that is because uh, I make a lot of these so that they can be hung with a wire. And that little groove down there between the foot and the base of the bowl really gives a nice place for a wire to be able to hang those. But anyway, so now, uh, and I've also, like I said, cleaned off the bat underneath there, made the foot. I'm going to uh, clean off any excess water. Uh, pretty much off the whole thing. Uh, now what I'm going to do, uh, I'm actually going to add a little bit of water to the outside because I'm going to be using my left hand on the outside of the bowl to support it and I'm going to be using a rubber rib on the inside as I reverse the wheel to do the shaping. So I'm going to be using one of these uh, mud tools. It's a dark blue uh, rubber rib. They make them in different colors that are different flexibilities. Uh, so now I'm going to reverse the wheel and I'm going to support it on the outside with my left hand and I'm going to push down with my rib in my right hand to, to, to do the shaping. I made a video about this called throwing in reverse or something to that effect. You can check that out if you're really interested in more details about how I do this and where that idea came from. Uh, but I'm pushing down with my right hand and I really want to focus on that base there like I said so I can get a nice curve coming right out of that base right into the rest of the bowl and by doing it with my right hand on the inside it's nice because it's my dominant hand it took a couple tries to get the, the feel of it of this hand working on the inside rather than the outside but once I did I really enjoy uh, throwing my bowls this way or at least my wide platter bowls like this. All right, so now I'm actually done with the shaping. I'm gonna go back in my normal direction. 
Now I'm going to add a little bit of water just to the rim because I'm going to lay this rim over flat. So I'm going to add a little water to the inside and the outside. And then I'm going to take the same rib and I'm just going to use the curved end of it, but I'm going to lay it over my, my index finger is right underneath that to kind of support it and also to, my index finger is kind of on the opposite side of where that is, uh, where that angle is there where I'm laying it over at. And then I'm going to work on kind of getting that smooth back over right down to there. And now I have a nice wide shallow platter bowl with this laid over rim which works really nicely if, uh, uh, if I want to carve it or if I want to just flute it, any of the, those kinds of things. Uh, if I'm going to flute it, I could do that now. A lot of times I wait for them to stiffen just a little bit, especially if they're larger pieces. Uh, of course, if they're my large platter bowls, usually I'm torching those as I'm making them to actually, I usually torch it before I do that shaping from the inside so that it has enough strength uh, stiffness wise to hold itself up. But if I wanted to just put some crimps in the rim, I could do that now. Uh, we'll do one there. We'll do it in like thirds, just by sight here. Let's see if we can get thirds. So there we go. We got three little crimps in the rim. And uh, now we have a platter bowl that, uh, let's see, where, the, where it's not the crimps, it's about two and a quarter tall. And then the whole piece was about 10 and a quarter wide. So there we go. There we got uh, you know, we got the same width as this as I did in height on that, which is pretty cool. Not uh, not planned, but uh, definitely worked out well. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this with the two angles, please let me know. Uh, leave me a comment if that helped you and if you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, hope you guys have a great day, and we'll see you soon. All right, bye.